The legend, the lion, the Larry. The man who slapped players with a face full of reality, dropped a bombshell on unsuspecting dreamers, and taught us hard-hitting lessons about life. Let's talk about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's most beloved character. Hey Charles, it's everyone. How are you today? Pokemon Scarlet and Violet was not only a fresh, if flawed, and somewhat freaky open world experience, but a story of tragedy, friendship, and the importance of discovering life's treasures. Of course, the story wouldn't be what it is without a cast of characters worth talking about. From memorable but misunderstood Nimona to mysterious and criminal Cassiopeia, to everything in my life went wrong and everyone I love is dead or dying Arvin, to Larry. Yes, Larry. Larry of Medallion. Valley City Gym and the Elite Four is an overworked, disgruntled salaryman who has seemingly no place in Pokemon's cast of wacky anime dropouts because he is literally just your typical depressed office worker. However, as it turns out, Larry might actually be Gen 9's most cherished character, finishing first in various popularity polls, making waves among adult fans, and earning all kinds of artistic tributes to his glory. There is no doubt that the hilariously out of place Salaryman is loved by the Pokemon community. And not only does Larry's mundane existence contrast comedically with everyone and everything else happening in Paldea, but he also dropped some real bombshells on anyone who saw past the jokes. Indeed, Larry's story contains three of the most important takeaways in the game. And the plan today is to dig up Larry's lessons for life that will change the way you see the world. So, Let's jump right in. But first, don't forget to check out my classes about making day-to-day -day life more fulfilling, purging your inner darkness, and smashing out home runs in the game of life with a free trial over on Skillshare. Skillshare is known for its photography, film, and drawing classes, but it's also become a training ground for creatives who want to reinvent their goals, their careers, and themselves. I've personally used Skillshare for years to boost my creative abilities, and for anyone looking at improving their video making skills for YouTube, or even just for the fun of it, be sure to use my free Skillshare trial link in the video description to take Enrico Luzzi's DIY video production for content creators from setting up to editing, as it covers the fundamentals of video making and will have you cranking out videos in just over an hour. Whether you're into pixel art, game development, manga drawing, YouTubing, study techniques, or something else, you're sure to find a class on Skillshare. And you can enjoy unlimited classes from the Skillshare library for free, since the first 1,000 people to use my link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. So snag the trial, best of luck skilling up, hope to see you over on Skillshare, and now, let's get back Back to today's chat. We first meet Silver Fox Larry at the Treasure Eatery in Medali. After completing the gym test challenge, a server asks if we are ready to face the exceptional everyman himself, and if we rise to the challenge, so does the exceptional everyman, begrudgingly getting up from his Zaru Soba to introduce himself as the gym leader assigned to Medali Gym, Larry. A Pokemon gym leader who does not look like a Pokemon gym leader at all. He does not have neon colored hair, his outfit isn't a calculated attack on boyhood. He is not bouncing around like he just inhaled a pound of Cocoa Puffs. No, he just looks like Uncle Randy on the way home from a long day selling vacuum cleaners to senior citizens at the mall. To dig a bit deeper, not only is Larry a typical everyday man name in Western culture, but also a reference to the word salaryman, the Japanese term for salaried white collar workers. In Japan, the term is virtually synonymous with the image of suited, tired businessmen crowding the trains on the way home from work after a solid night of overtime. And and Larry certainly fits the part. Basically, the man just wants to go home, so he shuts down the small talk pretty quickly by remarking that his boss will dock his pay if he spends too much time chatting, encourages us to get this battle over with, and we hit the pitch. It's no surprise that the everyday normal man specializes in everyday normal Pokemon, a sleepy koala, an evolution that is barely an evolution, and an ace that is actually pretty interesting. On one hand, Larry's Staraptor is just another gag, but it's also a strong counter to the fighting type Pokemon that could sweep Larry's team. In this battle, Staraptor knows two moves, Facade and Aerial Ace. And while the other gym leaders terastalize their aces into unexpected typings, Larry does something so expected that it is unexpected expected by doubling down on Staraptor's normal typing to take players for a ride on the double stab pain train. Trainers leaning too heavily on their grass cat or ghost monkey got cratered by aerial ace, and underleveled status manipulation monsters were left in the rubble by Facade. Moreover, Facade is particularly significant to Larry, who labels it the signature move of working adults in the Japanese version, and drops a bombshell of a one-liner about it in the English version. I think it's time to show you that real life 
isn't all just being true to yourself. In the wake of Larry's weighty words, the battle heats up, but in the end, we are better than average, and by average, I mean Larry. After his defeat, Larry treats us to dinner and gives us TM25. And with that, he heads back to work, leaving us to chuckle about his grim outlook on adult life. But beneath the gag, Larry's words were packed with wisdom. Enter Larry's lesson for better living, number one. Be true to more than just yourself. Unfortunately, part of the philosophy behind the otherwise wonderful self-fulfillment movement of recent years is often misconstrued as something like be true to yourself by doing whatever you want, whenever you want, and expect that somehow life will just work out for you. This is not an ideal approach to living, because what you want is not always what you need, or what others need from you. Not to mention that yourself is something that shifts shape as easily as a handful of silly putty, ultimately stranding those who are only true to themselves without the strong identity, values, or purpose necessary to power through life's chaos. As such, it's little wonder that so many people who should normally be happy end up sinking beneath the sands. But nested in Larry's words is a way out of the quagmire, that instead of merely being true to yourself, you should be true to something bigger. To be precise, be true to powerful principles and be true to the world. Firstly, although you are where you are right now, where exactly that is is isn't always clear, but principles are the lanterns that light the way forward, so build powerful principles and follow them. Secondly, real life isn't all just being true to yourself, because yourself, the unstable concept that it is, is just one aspect of real life. Families, communities, companies, societies, physics, the bodies we inhabit, the natural world, these external elements and others are as much a part of us as we are a part of them. And if we don't pursue harmony with these elements, we are quickly devoured. Unfortunately, this does mean doing a lot of things that we don't necessarily want to do, and this includes wearing a series of facades. Essentially, Larry's facade metaphor is referencing the Honne Tatemai concept that is key to survival in the environment that Pokemon was created in, Japan. Japan places a high value on being true to more than just yourself, and this is evident in the division between Honne and Tatemai. Honne describes one's true feelings and desires, whereas Tatemai describes the behaviors and beliefs that one actually exhibits in public. In other words, the facade. People will conceal their honne when it isn't aligned with social expectations, putting up a facade and even telling blatant lies to hide their true feelings. Honestly, as a foreigner, it can be difficult to adapt to this style of communication. We need to try hard to read the air instead of what is literally being said. And it can often feel like people are being dishonest. But the honne tatemai concept is prevalent in Japan because the culture prioritizes the whole over the individual. In other words, Words, honne tatemai exists to avoid conflict and to minimize social discord. And it's partially why Japan is such a safe, principled, and wonderful place to live. That said, we can benefit from this mentality anywhere, as when we are not true to our own whims, but instead to the world, we tend to create more value for others, take better care of our families, stand a little closer to the toilet, etc, etc. If you are true to the world and true to powerful principles, you are likely to push off towards a more fulfilling life, even if that life still has its rough patches. We soon learn more about the man beneath the mask after crossing paths, this time in the most unexpected of places. Upon earning Paldea's eight gym badges, we head to the Pokemon League to defeat the Elite Four, the top champion, and become a champion ourselves. And after decimating Lin and Chaozu, we can only wonder what kind of oddball the third Elite Four member could be. And then he enters the room. Hello there, it's me, Larry. So, you made it this far. I serve as a member of the Elite Four too. Yes. Unfortunately for me. Ah, uh, Larry, players must have thought. Switching Lucario, Annihilate, or Quaquavel into the starting spot to take the broken old man over the knee. Only for Larry to drop another bombshell just before the battle begins. At my gym, I use normal type Pokemon since I feel they have a lot in common with me. But, well, the boss told me to use a different type here. So if you have any complaints, please take them up with La Primera. Anyway, time to get to work. And with that, Larry's Birds of Prey swoop 
Lupin for the kill. Tropius, Oricodio, Altaria, Flamigo, Staraptor. Larry's team is just five ice beams away from disaster at any given moment, but the battle could present difficulties to underleveled or unbalanced teams or any team from that other gym in Saffron City. If baited into leading with a fighting type, players would have been in trouble coming out the gates. And Larry's Staraptor and Flamigo are equipped with fighting type moves themselves to edge out ice and rock type Pokemon that might otherwise run through Larry's lineup. Also, Larry pivots from expectations yet again by terrestrializing his flying Terra type Flamigo instead of Staraptor to double down on flyer power. As the battle's de facto ace, Flamigo can sweep with double stab Brave Bird and hit quite a few weaknesses with an all physical moveset that leverages its high attack stat. But of course, this isn't Pokemon Colosseum, it is vanilla Pokemon. So not even 5 birds, 5 hours of sleep, and 35 cups of coffee are enough for Larry to get in the way of a player with a reasonably leveled, balanced team or a single level 100 golden go and an a button and that is the end of Larry. Except that it's not. Because in the post game, top champion Gita has us complete a gym inspection that involves rematching each of Paldea's gym leaders. And that means more Larry. After hoofing it to Mandali, we find a disgruntled Larry who wants to knock the task off his list ASAP, so we hurry to the treasure eatery to get the deed done. White Collar Eeyore voices his doubts that he'll leave much of an impression on us, but actually, he does leave quite the impression with the following words. People, Pokemon, there's no need to overcomplicate things. Nowadays, people only seem to want a shock factor, something weird, something bizarre. When all's said and done, simplicity is strongest. As Larry suggests, nowadays, people are obsessed with the idea of the anti-normal. And largely due to algorithms promoting the visibility of human behaviors in direct proportion to how excessively over the top they are, we are continually battered by the goofiest ideas. The insanity is amplified the more we surrender to whatever the algorithm man crams into our mouths to keep us chewing. And at this point, many people no longer enjoy the simple wonders of everyday life because those experiences aren't as exciting or luxurious or above average as the lifestyle fantasies and identity extremes presented by social media. They have become slaves to the shock factor. Ironically, this is why a character like Larry stands out so much because he is absolutely normal in an absolutely insane way world. It's not that we should all strive to be a Larry, and being different can be really, really good. But Larry does have a great point, bringing us to Larry's life lesson number two, resist the shock factor. Larry's comments about the extreme versus the normal are worth contemplating in a modern era that is captivated by the shock factor, wherein many people are slapped with crippling cognitive dissonance when the inflated expectations perpetuated by social media clash with reality. And as algorithms continue to favor the shock factor based on what triggers the strongest responses from our overactive monkey brains, we need to be increasingly focused on the things that keep us grounded, or else we'll get swept away in a whirlwind of information overload social comparisons, echo chambers, and plain old-fashioned stupidity. For this generation in particular, it is becoming very important to be able to separate the insanity of the internet from the relative simplicity of reality such that one can actually navigate life. Pursuing simplicity is one way of regaining clarity in an overly complicated world. As King Larry says, simplicity is strongest. He isn't living on the wild side like a nihilistic pro snowboarder or a digital nomad wearing a costume made out of fruit loops, but simply clocking in, clocking out, and staying grounded to the simple life. And there is something respectable to that approach, as it certainly is advantageous to simplify complexity wherever possible. Of course, in Larry's case, life is simple as far as we know, but we can see that his job is very demanding, and it's actually his jaded office worker persona that is largely responsible for his popularity. So let's talk about it. If you are a tired adult working hard day in and day out to put bread and gushers on the table, then you've probably felt like Larry at some point or another. Because the reality of living is that living is tough. That is the norm 
not the anomaly. Not to mention that living can be particularly exhausting when you're overworked. And being overworked is the standard in Pokemon's birthplace, Japan, where working overtime is built into the culture. And it is being a punching bag for the daily grind that makes Larry so relatable to older audiences. But even so, I think there is a very optimistic undertone to his story. Not just because we have managed to wring a couple good rules for living out of his one-liners, but because Paldea's Eeyore thrives on one of life's greatest treasures. A treasure also celebrated by the character that Larry is based on. To Japanese players and J-drama lovers, Larry's character design is a fairly obvious nod to that of Goro Inogashira, the protagonist of Kodoku no Gurume, a manga that follows salesman Goro Inogashira as he travels across Japan for work, breaking for a meal at a restaurant in each chapter. Goro is soft-spoken, serious, and looks battered by too many long days on the road. But Goro's on-the-road meals provide him with exactly what he needs, pockets of time wherein he can relax his facade, let go of his work work obligations, and simply enjoy the pleasure of eating. There is no absurd melodrama or dark plot twist lurking beneath the surface of Kodoku no Gurume. It is simply a story about eating. And in 2012, the manga was adapted into a hit TV drama. Its success was to be expected as the appeal of the show is universal because there is just nothing quite as peaceful, comforting, and satisfactory as a tasty, uninterrupted meal in solitude. When our worries melt away into delicious flavors, the world beyond fades into the background, and our energy is restored bite by bite. It is the simplest of experiences, but one of life's most joyful, and an experience that delights the tired working men of both Solitary Gourmet and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Like Goro, Larry is tired and beaten down, and like Goro, Larry takes tremendous joy in the simplest of things. We see that joy when he treats us to dinner, and he can't stop from letting his poker face burst into an expression of absolute jubilation. In a game all about finding one's treasure, Larry's treasures are life's simple pleasures. As evident in Larry's desire to focus on what is simple rather than what is extreme, novel, weird, bizarre, or otherwise a shock to the senses, Larry is not one to seek pleasure from big dreams, Lamborghinis, or exciting adventures. Instead, he looks to life's simple pleasures to shine a light on even the darkest of days, which is every day in Larry's life. Because even if you have the most mundane or stressful job, and even if the voluminous hair alien is your boss, you can still pack every day with simple pleasures. This is an idea of value in the current era, wherein people have become obsessed with ideas that are complete poppycock in the pursuit of happiness. Instead of chasing exotic lifestyles, short-lived bursts of pleasure, algorithm dopamine, net cred, and a steady drip of illusions, there are more wholesome, more sustainable pathways to happiness, and one of the best is to embrace life's simple pleasures and be thankful for them. A tasty meal, a hot coffee, a walk in the woods, a laugh with a friend, a minute of meditation, a book in bed, a totally sick pull, a family barbecue, a sun bath, etc, etc. Life is tough. Working hard is a given, not an exception. Most of us are working hard at pretty normal or even pretty grueling jobs. And let's be honest, school is not always a lot of fun either. But regardless, there is just so much joy to be derived from focusing on the value of what we do, disconnecting from the shock factor machine, and, for instance, enjoying a tasty meal. Even while working three jobs to make alimony payments like our man Larry. So be true to your principles and the world that you are a part of. Ground yourself to what is simple and good. Savor the treasures of everyday life. Thank Larry for dropping the three rule bombshell for better living. And someone, please get that man a cup of coffee.